Hello everyone, I am Jed Bedrock and welcome back to Jed Bedrock Aviation. This is the start of a new series that I'm going to do called Dogfight Analysis where I will be analyzing dogfights that I have while I'm getting footage to record videos and stuff. There are some dogfights that will be 1v1 between team members and others like the one you're about to see today is on public servers with random people that have the skill to go toe-to-toe. -to -toe. So without further ado, welcome to the BF109F4 versus the XP50. A very interesting matchup and this one happened at low altitude. For starters, I will have you watch the entire dogfight from my point of view. Then we will analyze the dogfight from a spectator.
So now, in spectator view, I'm going to analyze the dogfight from a third-person perspective, kind of explain what was going through my head at the time, and uh, different tactics that were employed, even though it just kind of looks like chaos. So, to start off, the XP-50 ambushed me when I was attacking a brigand, and after he passes, he hit me with a few low caliber rounds, did almost no damage, and then I got on his tail. So from here, the both of us instantly go into a turn rate fight. Now the BF-109 at my higher speed and energy level is easily able to cut into a circle. The benefit that he has over me are his huge powerful twin engines. He is faster than me in almost every way. And even though he can't turn better than me, he doesn't have to. Because he's faster, he can stay away from my guns and out of my sights. And because I'm bleeding my speed in a turn, the slower I get, the worse my turn gets. So for this, he is able to just stay out of my gun sights and eventually he ends up pulling away out of the rate fight. Now the danger for the BF-109 in this case is the concern that the XP-50 is going to come up behind you and he will. He is going to be able to come up behind you because he's faster He's taking a wider turn, but that doesn't matter for him because you can't get on his tail. When he does eventually overlap you, you will kind of see I start to get worried. When he's getting further and further behind me, it starts to worry me. When that happens, I know that I need to break out of the rate fight. At this point, the XP-50 forces me to. He has enough speed to cut into my turn and he comes right up behind me. When that happens, I'm not so much concerned about the rate as I am trying to force him to overshoot. At that point, I cut off the fight, and there are a few times where I actually lose track of him visually. So I know he's behind me, I just don't know where. And so now it becomes a game of staying out of his sights and trying to force him to overshoot. And that's done by pulling a lot of maneuvers that the XP-50's speed is going to go against him for. So at this particular moment you'll see that I was trying to keep my nose up. That's because I was nearing stall speed and really trying to force an overshoot, which I did actually get. Unfortunately, I didn't have enough speed to get my nose up for it. So then he, he dives down, and I dive down as well, building up speed. I didn't exactly know where he was at the time, so I didn't fall in behind him. But I had enough speed, and I was defensive flying enough to stay out of his gun sights. So now I have a visual, and I'm able to fall in behind him. At this point, once I'm behind him, he realizes that he can't win when I'm behind him like this. So he decides to break away and use his speed to his advantage. And he just decides to leave and, re and reset.
At this point in the fight, he decides that now that he has a lot of altitude on me, he is going to roll over and drop down onto me, and boom and zoom. As soon as I see him looping over, I go defensive, and I start doing a defensive uh, corkscrew. And I'm able to dodge his boom and zoom. And immediately after that, we start doing defensive flying. I now have a lot of speed, or more, and the goal is to try to get him to bleed his speed. So as time goes on, I'm able to get him to bleed more and more speed. The more speed that I can get him to bleed, the better. And eventually we try and we uh, commit to the scissors. And the issue when, at least in War Thunder, when two good pilots go up against each other, is that when you get into scissors, the likelihood of both of you over committing to get the shot off is really high. And that's exactly what happens here. We both overcommit during the scissors. Just while trying to get shots off. So the scissors go on for a little bit. And then I cut in and we both overcommit and we take each other's wings off. The it's unfortunate that this fight ended in a tie. Because at the rate that I was able to cut into his turn in those scissors, once I got him going at a slow speed, meant that on the next pass I most likely would have been able to shoot him, if not in the next two passes. So it's unfortunate that this ended in a tie, but it was a really good battle. I hope that you guys enjoyed, and I will see you next time in Dogfight Analysis. Bye.